It's actually looking pretty good. Sony A7S III, flip screen monitor. I'm a fan. <laughs> What's up everyone, my name is Evan Naka. We are not back in the home office, we were actually in the home studio, AKA the garage. I didn't realize how dirty my garage was. I'm like looking at it in the flip screen monitor. Oh man. Um, but you know what, it's gonna be fine because there's a reason for it and I'll explain in a little bit. So today what we're gonna be doing, and I got the help of a beautiful assistant, who is not here, there she is, the beautiful Anissa Davis with her pup, Ellie Rue. And she's gonna help me out today because something that I get a lot of questions about is the portrait photography that I usually do that creates that black background with no black background. I just shoot it with empty space behind it. And everyone's asking, you know, what are their settings? How do you do that? Um, I wanna try this at home. Can you do a more in-depth tutorial? Well, you're in luck, today's the day. We are gonna dive into the exact setting that I'm using, the light source that I'm using, how I place it, what it looks like when I'm first setting up, and what it looks like when I'm finally dialed in with all the right settings, with the light power strength, and I'll show you the final result of the photo. So let's just jump right into it. So today we're only gonna be using one light source. I decided to do this because not everybody has multiple lights that they have, let alone even one. So I thought if I brought in two lights, three lights, it was gonna be too much. And that's already something that a lot of people can't do because they don't have access to that. But I guarantee you, whether it's a strobe, whether it's a lamp, whether it's something that you have lying around, I mean, even a flashlight could work with this. The basic principles are all gonna be the same. And my arm is getting really tired because I'm holding this camera and I didn't take the cage off, so it's actually super heavy. Um, but we're gonna deal with it, we're gonna get through it. This is a 600 watt high speed strobe. Uh, actually, you know, I'm gonna give this to you. That worked. And this strobe is actually on its last legs because, come here, I'll, I'll show you something. See this missing chunk? I know this might be surprising, but it's not supposed to look like that. Thanks to the uh, infamous Costas Garcia, who dropped my light at a shoot the other day. This bad boy is on its last legs, but it's okay because we got some new strobes coming and I'm super excited for it because I think there's gonna be an amazing partnership coming up, but that's next time. Today on my strobe, I am using a grid. You don't normally have to do it, it does help. So what a grid does, it adds more direction to your light. Even though you have your softbox or whatever light shaper that you're using, Light tends to do whatever it wants. It, it's like an adolescent teenager that's just wild. It's like, you know what? Yeah, you're telling me what to do, but I'm still gonna do whatever I want. I'm gonna go against the walls. I'm gonna be splash your background. I'm gonna fill areas that you don't want light. When you don't want any light splashing onto the background, it definitely helps, but you don't have to use it. For the light setup, I think what we're gonna be doing is, it's my favorite type of lighting. It's like a Rembrandt style, split lighting. I like it when there's a lot of drama on there. I'm not gonna light her from the front, it's gonna be from the side and at a higher angle. So let's go to get that in position, and then I'll have Anissa stand in there and we can start dialing in some settings. All right, hopefully it doesn't fall over. So before I take my first shot, there's a few things that I know that I have to have on my settings just because of the type of shot it is. Another tip before we actually start shooting is that we need to create a lot of space behind the subject. If your subject is right up against the wall and you have the light flashing, this shot is basically impossible to even try and accomplish. So the more space you have, the easier this shot can be. And that way you can get rid of all that ambient light and have the main light source be basically the only light source that your camera is picking up. Like right now, Anissa is standing, what, what would you say, is that like, 10, 15 feet away from the wall. Our dirty, dirty garage wall. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good, it was 15. 15 feet? Yeah. Since I've done this before, I know my f-stop is gonna have to be really high. And that's gonna get a bit of a lot of light. So I'm gonna shoot at f11. I actually, I actually like shooting like this when I get a lot of things in focus and aspects of the face, or especially during portraiture, aren't out of focus. I just think it makes a really cool photo. So to me, this doesn't bother me. However, if let's say you are somebody that likes to have that bokeh effect, even on facial features where the eyes in focus but the ear is kind of falling out of focus, this may not be your style of photography or your way of lighting somebody and creating this black background. Um, but if you don't mind, then this is perfect. The other thing is gonna be the shutter speed is gonna have to be really high. 
Since I have a high speed sink, I'm gonna go ahead and crank this up to one over 500. I'm gonna keep my ISOs fairly low. I'm just gonna keep it at 100, the base rate. And we're gonna go ahead and take a test shot, see where we're at and make some adjustments from there. This isn't gonna work unless you're trying to create some really moody, spooky shot. This is my first image. You can barely see her. So we obviously know that's way too dark. There's a few things I'm gonna change. First and foremost, I'm gonna check the strength of my strobe. Right now, it was at one over 32 power. So I know it's gonna to have to be quite a bit higher. So let's go ahead and put it up to one over eight. And I'm not gonna change anything else. I'm gonna see if that alone can help me get that photo that I want. Hey, we're looking a lot better. You can start to see her, but she's still a little dark. I'm gonna turn down my shutter speed. Now it's one over 320. Ooh. Okay, so this is good. I like how she's lit. This is typically how I light somebody for a shot like this. She's got some cool shadows. She's getting a little bit of that triangle right underneath her left eye. And that's that Rembrandt lighting that I'm going for usually. I might change, I might shift the light over a little bit, but not change the settings. So I'm gonna change the light just a tiny bit. No settings, I'm not changing anything else. Much better. So this is kind of our final lighting that we have. Now we're just gonna nail down the pose and I'll show you the final results. <laughs> That's it for today. That's how you create that black backdrop without a backdrop using one light, one camera, and that's it. And one lady. And one lady. <laughs> Thank you, Anissa, for helping us out today. I'm gonna go ahead and put up our favorite photos from today, and hopefully I'll see you guys next time. I'm Evan Naka, stay creative.